Hey everybody, happy Monday. If you're watching this on a replay, love to put in the comments, hashtag replay. Watching this on a replay. Go and get everything set. So how's everybody doing tonight? As you come on, tell me hi, tell me what you're working on. Bonnie, I um I texted you back. I don't know if you saw it or not, because then I put the I sent the text and then set the phone down. Hi, Cindy. Cindy finished some beautiful things that are going to be on the Facebook page this Friday for show off your faux Friday. I always get kind of like um torn between when people bring things in on Friday, do I put it in the comments? for that Friday or do I hold it? I'd like to hold it for the next Friday because then I can really feature um, more patterns for everybody to see. Holly working on your slipping sideways. Nicole working on the Brianna and the Chocomania. E, Ashley, oh good. Socks, we're gonna talk about socks a little bit today after a, a kind of a discussion Melissa and I had earlier. Hi Joyce, hi Tammy. Okay, so it's seven o'clock. We'll go ahead and get started officially. Let me get myself situated. Welcome to Monday Motivation. Today is Monday, April 7th, 18th. <laughs> Uh, my name is Kristen. I'm the owner of The Little Yarn Shop in downtown Saginaw, Michigan, at, inside the SBRC Marketplace. Shop hours are Wednesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., except for LYS Day. We're going to have expanded hours. Yay! I want to get as many people in here that day as we can. And we'll just, more hours means we can space it out more. Vicki working on your breathe and hope. Stacy started your favorite brew. Awesome. Shar, yeah, it's snowy up there. How tell me how much you've gotten? I I'm curious to know. It's been um my folks are still down in Florida. So mom told me that the guys were working on the pool and swimming in it because it was hot. And I was like, well, they should just come here. <laughs> they could stand out in the snow. It'd be fine. Um I'm so glad you finished 14. Uh, yeah, you got to do a little more. <laughs> it's been snowing here all day, not heavily though. Um, and nothing really has stayed on the ground. It has more on our property because it's pretty covered. Um, I think the ground might be a little bit colder. Ashley, I heard, um, Ashley snagged one of the wander knit kits that I had left and right away started working on the, the hat. Um, I do have one of those left. I, I had a little bit of a hiccup with um, missing my own fault. I under ordered one of the bags of yarn. So I'm waiting for that to show up and then I can fulfill the last few kits that I have. Well, almost half of them I have in the back waiting for more yarn. <laughs> Hi, Julie. Hi, Fran. Shelby Township has three inches of snow. Holy cow. It's like there's more up north and there's more down south. We get this, we get this strip right through the middle that um, I don't know. I always say it's because of Dow. Dow keeps us warm. <laughs> um, so let's get chatting about knitting. What am I working on? I am working on my still unnamed local local yarn kit, I guess. Um, so designed by Jill Zelensky, who is Knitterella. I made some progress since last week. So I am, Julie and I are kind of um, mystery knitting, test knitting as Jill writes this pattern. For those of you that haven't heard the whole saga, uh, locally dyed yarn, locally designed pattern. Um, those that ordered early, uh, get some locally made goodies, but I am finally on the decrease section. So I'm on the last little bit. 
which will mirror, well, yeah, it'll be the opposite of that coming down to a point. Um, there are still kits available for pre-order. Um, I did see Stephanie, who is the dyer, sent me a message earlier about um, how the kits were coming and, and what she was working on, but she's only one woman and there are 18 colors between the three kits. That's a lot to go through. Diane, thank you. <laughs> so we'll, I'll talk about what I'm wearing in a second. <laughs> you gotta love my, it's a unique look. I tell you what, why not? Only for you guys will I do this. <laughs> um, I don't know how many of you saw earlier today, but um, Casapenka has released uh, the name and photographs of her shawl that is being released on LYS Day, which is April 30th, um, which is the same for the kits. The, the kit pattern will be available April 30th as well. But her shawl pattern is called Rick Rack. And this is not, this is not the best picture. It was not one of her professional photos, but you can still get an idea of what it looks like. So it's a um, boomerang shaped shawl, two colors. She obviously, she shows kind of high contrast, the pink and the green, and of course, I'm gonna have colors like this on that day because everybody likes what they see. But I wanted to show something a little bit more low contrasty. So I'm using the Saginaw speckle and then a tonal light gray. So you can see it, but it's really subtle. I think once you once I get into these larger sections, I think it will be a little bit more obvious. I'm getting more cooling down here, which I think looks really cool. The benefit of um, having yarns that are fairly similar is like down here. I can see it really clearly. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. These first two rows I did with the wrong yarn. So it was supposed to be the variegated. I did it with the tonal, but you can't tell. Can't really tell because it blends in. I can tell but it wasn't enough that it was gonna bug me and I didn't take it back, which I'm pretty proud of myself about. Um, but it's a very, it's a very simple to um, grasp design, I guess would be the way to put it. So every section is essentially the same. You're just changing what yarns you use. So it's not um, the breathe and hope was complicated with sections of different patterns. The snarko meter had, was more like a sampler. This is um, a lot simpler. And I think the kits that I'm going to have here for, um, for LYS Day from Dream and Color are going to be sharp no matter which one you choose. But I'm really happy. And I will have kits in addition to the ones that Dream and Color is specifically putting um, together for this, I will have kits for my colors too. It's so out of my comfort zone doing something neutral. So that's what I'm working on. What am I wearing? I showed this off, but I haven't worn it and shown it off that way yet. So this is Casapinka's panic sweater. And I think she officially calls it the, in parentheses, no need to panic sweater. Um, Ah, there we go. Melissa just posted the link. She offers a long sleeve or three quarter sleeve and short sleeve version. I can't, I, I can't remember if I actually did these the length they were supposed to be or not. I don't think I blocked it, but I wanted to get it done and shown off to people. At some point, obviously, if I'm ever going to wear this, it's going to become a two three quarter sleeve pattern, but I kind of like doing this for shop samples because you really get a better idea what it's going to look like one way or the other. Um, this yarn that we used for uh, this pattern is over there, it's not over here, is CIL cotton. It's 50% um, cotton, 50% superwash merino, extra fine merino blend, and it's that chainette style construction that's um, really lightweight yarn, but you get 
really, I mean, you can see the texture on this. I think I said before, when I held it up on camera, I was so much happier holding it up and seeing the texture when it was laying flat. I, I didn't, I couldn't see it as well, I guess. So that's what I'm wearing. Um, what do I have to show off? I have things to show off you guys. Nothing I finished, but um, the girls have been kind of on a stuffed animal kick. I posted Karen's puppy that she knit a, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Deb left four of her bunny heads here, but they are in, in bunny making mode. So here's one of the ones that Pat did. Look at how cute this guy is. Little floppy ears. So the pattern is called the Opal Sock Yarn Bunny. And this is going to be kind of a good example of when two people follow the same pattern but have a completely different gauge, you get completely different head sizes and body sizes. So the pattern is written one way for one size needles and one gauge. If you don't get gauge on something like this, it's not a big deal. It's just a stuffed animal, but it's very easy to see how two different knitters will knit things very differently. So Deb's been helping Pat with this one, but on her own, she's got, I'm pretty sure she has eight of these, she said, little heads, little bunny heads that she's working on. Um, all of these are self-striping sock yarn. So this one uses one of the um, earth self-striping zebra kits. I love it. And she actually made the ears match for the most part, which is cute. These two are done with the heritage prints, the self-striping. Look at how cute. They're just so adorable. And then you can't go wrong with a smushy with cashmere bunny head, right? Look at that. It's like just cries, spring, Easter. They're so sweet. So those are the bunnies they've been working on. And Pat found a little pattern for a duck. And it's not a pattern that's available on Ravelry. I think they found it on Etsy. But it's this cute little baby duck. Look at this thing. This is just the cutest little tail. Sits right up. Deb and she have been working on this little thing. They did the headband and fixed up the, be the beak on Saturday. But she's just so stinking cute. I love it. <laughs> um, I did look on Ravelry to see if the pattern was even listed there for people to put their projects in, and it's not. <laughs> I know you guys, they're just so, it almost makes me want to knit little things like this, <laughs> almost. Um, what else do I have to show? Oh, this, do you guys see this here? <laughs> Angie finished her Shawlography. I had to look up at mine. It's not been blocked. She literally just finished it this weekend, but, and she brought it in to show it to me. And I said, well, can you leave it here so I can show it off to everybody else? So it's not been blocked. Some of her ends have been woven in, but some have not. But look at how beautiful this is. Once it gets blocked, it's going to, it's going to look awesome. The brioche, such a fun high contrast brioche and it's interesting that this section is two colors like it calls for but because the colors are really similar you can't you can't see a whole lot of difference there but when this gets blocked and opened up it's going to look so so cool she's pretty proud of it i'm pretty proud of her for doing it and um, I hope it will encourage people that have started it and maybe not finished it, set it aside for a while to, to pick theirs back up and work on it. It's, it's not a race. They're going to look beautiful whenever they're done. Holly <laughs> makes you want to do another one. Yes. Why not? 
although he has so many cool patterns out there, um, I think every one of them is an adventure. The way his mind works is something else entirely. But I think it's really cool. You can see all the different texture, all the different colors. So I had to show that off to you guys. Um, upcoming, I don't know, I need to get back to working on my summer trellis top as soon as this wrap is done. That's going to be my goal is to work on that trellis top. It's pretty much straight stocking out. I think it has a few increases in the body every so often. Linda, finish the edging on yours. Good. Um, so one of the things that Angie asked about was the beginning and end of the border or this last section. So when you start these, I, I kind of call it an applied edge, but it's like a whole section with these stripes. He has you do this little short row wedge, which is a very interesting look, right? At the other end, you don't do that. And what you end with is just your stripes like you normally would. So it's designed to not be symmetrical from one end to the other. So if something happens where you look at it and go, oh, I think I missed something, you didn't. That's how it's supposed to be. If it were me knitting for myself and not for a shop sample, I probably would try and math it to figure out how to make something on the other end so it's symmetrical. But that one, I actually followed the pattern the way it was written. <laughs> Um, new stuff. So not, I don't have a whole shipment of I don't know. I can't tell Melissa's Melissa's showing me yarn, and I don't know what she wants me to say about it. <laughs> um. I'm going to try and open this without making too much noise. Not a whole new shipment of yarn, but I mentioned a couple weeks ago when I was down in Florida, I got some of the earth, the new earth yarns called um, 16. There's 16 micron yarn. Yes. <laughs> um, so, I asked my sales rep and he sent me samples of the fingering in this beautiful blue. Look at that, you can see the tonal. Very, very slight, but still lights and darks in there. So this yarn is 100% super wash ultra fine merino. 50 grams, 220 yards. So they come in little 50 gram hanks. I have considered bringing this in as a possible alternative to the LYS date kits because you need 50 grams of six colors. I haven't decided yet, but I wanted to show this. I always get kind of cool new things and I want, want to share with you all. And then they get, sent me this insanely bright worsted version. The worsted comes in 100 gram skeins, 220 yards. The 16 is 16 micron merino, so the ultra fine, really soft. The fingering weight is um, just a two ply yarn. The worsted is their standard, a gazillion plies, which you probably won't be able to see in here, but um, it's similar to their harvest worsted really even their harvest dk is the same way where it's um it's a really round yarn it wears well and it shows really good stitch definition well they also sent me which this is kind of cool and if everybody did this it would take up a lot of space but i still think it's pretty neat they sent it's like it's like going paint shopping this is all the colors that those yarns come in. Isn't that cool? I actually didn't even take it out of the package before now. So this is me seeing it for the first time too. 
ultra fine 16 micron merino 65 colors so i love this that they have all the shades kind of together there we go so the browns dark browns and blacks grays blues purples greens look at those beautiful greens orangey reds well red reds orange reds yellows the bright greens this is what i should have when i have um michigan state fans come in and they have in their mind exactly the green that they want sometimes we can't even find it on the heritage wall and i have a gazillion colors of heritage but something like this maybe one of these is the michigan state sparty green that they have in their mind <laughs> the beautiful turquoises and more purples so it's really cool. Um, that might be something I carry down the road. I don't know. The other thing they sent me that was nice is color cards, real color cards for some of their other yarns. So you may have seen if you've been in here, I have the unique fingering and is this the unique fingering? Yeah. It's, it's a computer printout that I have. Did I say Harry Potter colors? <laughs> I'm sure there are Harry Potter colors in there too. Um, I have my computer printout of their self-striping yarn and what it looks like, but they sent me these really nice true to color printouts. So you can see all of their, this is like the yarn that we use for the butterfly shawls. So the one that is in all of my samples is this one here. So you can see what it would look like if it was knit up as a sock versus um, what it looks like knit up with the butterfly. But they sent the card, they have a DK weight self-striping cotton. They have their monochrome cotton. Monochrome is their um, monochromatic color that it, it does a little bit of a hue shift. So there's their monochrome cotton. Harvest, their harvest one only has fingering and worsted. The DK was sort of a new, they sent me two of those. The DK was, is a new addition. So they're still working on that, but harvest fingering and harvest worsted in all these beautiful shades. Those are the ones that are all um, natural dyes. Colors named after their dyeing material. So blueberry, that's the, the other sweater I'm working on. Cosmic purple carrot, citrus, hazelnut, grape leaf, fig. That's kind of cool. They have their bulky cotton. I did, um, I did that gray small shawl that had the tassels on it out of their called Galate, Galate, 100% bulky cotton in a whole bunch of different colors. Their bulky superwash merino, Kuzu. This is the yarn um, there. Do they have a barley color? <laughs> I, they should, like beer color. Some, some of these though don't turn out the way you thought it, you would think it would. Now the closest thing they have is probably acorn or hazelnut. <laughs> um, but the kuzu is, I used their special edition Harmony, the rainbow stripe for that black and striped sweater that I did that Victoria steals all the time. But we've done hats with that. I have enough on hand to do another sweater for myself at some point. The merino gradient kits. I brought one of those out last week when I was talking about the garden trellis shawl that is different from the Stephen West garden trellis shawl and not the summer trellis sweater. <laughs> um, so monochrome, oh, so this is fingering, DK or worse, it gives you a little bit of a better idea of how the colors change in that. 
beautiful stuff. So it's pretty cool to see. Isn't that what I used for the topographical scarf? Yes, the um, unique DK, which I don't know if they just say that this is Oh, I do. They say on here, fingering, DK, or worsted. All the same colors in all three. And they also have, well, no, I guess they're totally, most of them are different. When they have their sock kits, they have the two 50 gram balls. Those have um, nylon in them. The 100 gram skeins are 100% merino. Um, but yeah, I've used the DK weight self-striping for the topographical scarf, that long rainbowy one. I've used it for the Masoni zigzag scarf. And then they sent me, um, I showed you all that it was called sleigh tracks. I think I showed you all. Um, that ironically is in the exact same color as that zigzag scarf I did. So, one of the other things I wanted to mention that is not here yet, but going to be 220, Julie. Um, so they both have, they both have 220 yards. The fingering is 50 grams. The worsted is a hundred grams. So it might be, depending on how Jill modifies the pattern, it might be cutting it a little close to use that for Jill's shawl. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm running low. That's the joys of being a test knitter too. You don't know if they're gonna modify things after the fact. Um, so coming in soon, I got the shipping notification that they are on their way to me. Coco Knits Makers Boards. Every time I've tried to go online and order them, they have been out of stock. Um, so I ordered I think I have 10 of them coming in and I ordered the gray. Um, people that have their makers boards love them. Christina was in uh, this weekend and we got talking about hers a little bit. All three, um, all three panels of it are heavy duty magnets. She can put her pattern on there and have no problem with the magnets on that. Um, it has separate accessories, magnet strips, a magnetic ruler, um, some of that stuff was in stock and some of it wasn't. So I could only get, um, I could only get some of it, but finally I will be able to tell people that yes, I have the Coco Knits makers boards here. They retail for $36, um, which is pretty comparable to the Knitter's Pride, um, pattern holders that I have only those are two-sided ones. So I'm excited to actually see these maker boards in person. I've not had the chance to do that yet. So maybe next week I'll be able to show that off. So let's talk socks for a minute. Um, Melissa's getting ready to start a new pair of socks and we got chatting about different sock methods. So first of all, tell me what's the easiest way to do this. Maybe we'll do either like thumbs up or hearts. Um, <laughs> I feel like that People on Facebook used to do that, and I don't know if they still do. But so give me a thumbs up if you do toe up socks. Give me a heart if you knit from the cuff down. I'm curious to see where everybody falls in this. And then we'll talk about different methods, one at a time, two at a time, all of that. But I'm really, I don't know, lots of thumbs up. So a lot of people do toe up. I'm, I don't know why I got an angry face. <laughs> Both, Holly's done both, I've done both. Awesome. So it's a good mix between the two. Um, I have done both. I prefer cuff down because that way I'm forced to finish them. If I do toe up, they get to be shorty socks and then I'm just about done. Um, yeah, so a lot of you do both too. Um, in terms of I can't knit and talk at the same time, not with this, you guys. <laughs> in terms of methods, um, tell me in the comments what methods you use. So I was trying to name them all and write them down, but traditional, 
a traditional sock would be done on double pointed needles, either three or four um, from the cuff down with a standard heel flap. Uh, so double points. There are the little nine inch circulars, like I have those little Chagu sets. Um, two circulars, most people do um, like two 24 inch cords, which then kind of segues into magic loop. Double points, nine inch circ. I think that's pretty much all the methods. Then there is um, one at a time or two at a time. There are benefits to both. Josie, DPNs are two at a time on two circs. That's kind of what I was telling Melissa about magic loop, additional double points. I learned my very first pair of socks were two at a time toe up magic loop because I knew myself well enough to know that I would not finish a second sock, which is, <laughs> I dug around to be able to show, just to have something to demonstrate. And I found, oh, it is on two circs. I thought this, this pair was on magic loop. Um, I have no idea when I started these socks. I maybe could go back in my Ravelry projects to see, but I'm guessing they're not in there either. <laughs> so this is two separate circular needles. Um, if you've seen people knit magic loop, it would be a same, the same concept. You're knitting, you knit the same needle with the same needle. So I'm always knitting my front needle to my front needle. It's a lot easier to explain to somebody if I have two different um, materials. So if one is wood and one is metal, you knit the wood with the wood and the metal with the metal. Um, but like Josie mentioned, doing two at a time tandem, I know my mom does that quite a bit too, where you decide if you're gonna do toe up or cuff down. If you're gonna do, let's say cuff down per se, you cast on the cuff for one and knit your cuff. Then on a separate needle, you cast on a second cuff, knit the cuff. Then you knit the leg of one, go over and knit the leg of the other. Um, so the great thing about that is it's a lot easier to carry around because you're not, I mean, honestly, this gets, I get annoyed with this because I'm impatient and I, I just feel like it's not as, um, when I end up having to carry around the two stains and the two socks, I feel like it's a lot, it's not as portable. Um, a lot of people knit socks because they can just tuck it in their purse or in their bag and have it at the doctor's office or things like that. Um, Kathy, you, Kathy, you gotta get back to yours. Bonnie, two at a time, separate needles, awesome. Vicki purchased some carbons, yes. Um, so doing them tandem where you're, you've got them on two separate needles, but you're working bits at a time is still, I guess the same way I would do a sweater sleeves that way too, um, knit to a decrease on one, knit to a decrease on the other. So you don't feel like you got one done and now you still have a whole second one to do. Um, most people that do two at a time do toe up. I have had people ask, and I know, I know Joyce has done it. You can do two at a time on either magic loop or two circs from cuff down, but it's a lot, <laughs> it's not quite as simple to cast on because of how the orientation of the yarn is. My suggestion tends to be cast them on separately and then put them on one long cord for magic loop if that's how you decide you wanna do it. Kathy been busy with craft shows, good. So Vicki mentioned carbons. Um, I am not a double point needle lover, but carbons, if you, if you like your double points and you're used to wood, when you get to that small circumference, many of you know that they can break, it's wood. Holly's doing cuff down two at a time magic loop, awesome. Um, the carbons, which are, I'll go grab one. They feel like wood, but they're strong.
Okay, so if you did two at a time, you would have two socks to rip when you make a mistake. Yes, <laughs> that is very true, Vicki. Um, although depending on how far down the mistake was, you could always transfer one. You could transfer one sock onto a spare needle, go back on one, fix it, and knit it back to where you're at the same point. I don't know if that's any quicker or not. So carbons, they are like, this is, you can see this is a US double zero. They are made with carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is used in a lot of automotive situations. It's very lightweight, but very strong. So for a double zero, I can flex it and it's not gonna break. The only time I have had somebody come to me with any sort of complaint was Suzanne who knits as many socks as Joyce does. Um, she used her so much, she actually wore down the carbon fiber where it joined the metal. So that's the one downside of these things. But when people look at the fact that they cost a little bit more, they're really, they might be double, what double point, like what your standard wood double point needles would be. But as soon as you break one of your wood ones, you have to go buy another set. These, these you'll be set for a while. <laughs> and they're not um, they're not as super slick as the all metal ones. This carbon fiber that's in the middle has a little bit of a grab to it. So if you're used to wood, it's it will give you that same feel, but with those sharp metal pointed tips. Holly, love the carbons. Yes. Get that one back in here so I don't screw things up. I have a lot of Knitter's Pride needles, you guys. <laughs> you can see some of them back there. And Chow Gu. All kinds of good stuff. So that's that's kind of my little mini session on different types of needles, different types of methods for socks. Um, if I didn't mention one, you guys let me know if there's some method that I haven't heard about yet, I'd love to. Um, there are a couple tricky things with like the nine inch cirques, the little tiny ones. Um, I've had, I've, I've run into a little bit of difficulty getting to the heel depending on what pattern you're using, but I can always throw a couple needles on there or play around. Oh, we didn't talk about flexi flips or high high of flyers. Addie calls them flexi flips. Um, Haya Haya calls them flyers, but they come in sets of three. I'll be right back again. Both Addie and Haya Haya offer a metal option and a wood or a bamboo option. So these are a size US 7. They come in sets of three. With the Addie needles, one tip is a little bit more pointed than the other. So if you're doing, you don't notice it on the smaller sizes, but with the bigger ones, you can see um, if you want more of a sharp tip or more of a blunt tip. Um, essentially, Let me move one of these out of the way. In the same way that this sock is on two circulars, I've got half on one circular and half on the other. Two of these would hold it the same way, but they would fold like double points. So you would see it more like that. I know that's a lot of needles and cords to look at, but so your, your sock would be on two of these from this, you can see it looks like double points, but you don't have all those extra little points sticking out everywhere. Um, then you're knitting with the third, transferring each time. Julie trying that one now. Hmm. Yes. Um, the top of hats, the flexi flips work really well. Um, well, any of these methods would work kind of the same for the top of hats, except the nine inch circ. But well, and that's the other thing you run into is your toe decreases if you're doing that. Um, sweaters, I've used these for sweaters. Before I 
really got into having the Chowgu nine to 12 inch circular needles. Um, these are what I would use for sleeves. Um, yeah, so that's a great option too. Um, really versatile. Both companies, sorry, I'm thinking, I'm thinking out loud and, and maybe, maybe it's not. I think actually Chow Gu has the little short, um, what do I want to call them? Connectors for their interchangeables. They come in a set of like the three little cords that would just be that little middle bit. Um, for people to be able to use, I believe, with their um, like their twist shorties. I heard some murmurings that Chowgu was coming out with some new stuff too. Julie mentioned it a couple weeks ago. I've heard a little bit more. Um, there's a trade show next month that I might try and get to, and they will have. I'm sure they'll have it there. Julie knit sideways. Yeah, once you get beyond um, the standard toe up or cuff down with patterns with different yarns, um, there is a pattern called skew, S-K-E-W, socks. I've done those before. It basically starts at a big toe and then kind of it's like origami. Diane, do flexi flips work with the heel flaps? It's a little fussy, Diane. I have um, four needles makes it easier. Definitely. Um, typically, if I don't have another set, what I would do is put the top half of my sock on a spare needle and use all three of my flexi flips for the heel until I got back to the point where I'm going in the round again, or just buy two sets. Uh... I think I, I think I showed you guys everything I was going to talk about today. I've gotten a few things here, here and there um, that are new to the shop. I got a couple of the Chowgu yarn butlers. Look at that, how pretty. Um, I used to, a long time ago, have the Yarn Susans um, and I've not been getting things from that vendor anymore, but these ones are, are really cool. So I got a couple of those in the shop. And this, um, some of, some of these that are not as um, durably made have a, what would you call this? The shaft that just sits right down in there. This one is metal. So it is good and sturdy staying in there. So I got some of those. I got more of the flights of stitch markers from Coco Knits. These things, they're not, they don't last very long when they're here, but it's just the cutest thing. And really one set of these has 120 nylon coated steel markers in five different styles, six different colors, all kinds of sizes. These are pretty much anything that you would need for any sort of stitch marker. I think that's it. Oh. Um, upcoming events. That's one thing I haven't talked about yet. Local Yarn Store Day, April 30th. Um, I have decided the shop will be open from 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. on LYS Day. So it is a Saturday. It's the last Saturday of the month coming up very quickly. Um, for those that are used to coming in and knitting on Saturday, that can still happen. It just probably won't be at the table here in the shop because I plan to have a lot of things, really cool stuff out for people to, um, to see and buy to support the shop. I will have some giveaways. I can't talk too much about those yet because I don't have them here. I wanna make sure that um, I, I get all that I think I'm gonna get before I start talking about that. Then I have started to get little bits of information from Marie Green about her four-day summer sweater knit-along. It's always 
um, begins July 1st. Typically in May, the shop owners get some of the information. Um, we may get a preview of the pattern and a, a couple tidbits. Mid-May, May 16th, is when she will be releasing or revealing the, the name of the pattern and the kind of theme. Um, like last year was the fireworks sweater. So she had the cute little logo that was the fireworks and she will have photos of what the finished sweater will look like. Um, <laughs> yes, Diane, it would work well for sticky yarns. So I, she sent me a little bit more information, but I'm not sure what I can and can't tell people yet. So I will say um, it's typical in that it's not a fingering weight or a sport weight sweater. Uh, she wants it to be a little bit heavier. So it's something that you can actually get done in four days to eight days, I think it is, depending on the size you do. And it's really not about competing to get the sweater done in four days. It's kind of a challenge to knit something as, as quickly as you can, or um, just to knit, her designs are really well written. Um, they're, they're size inclusive. They have good points to check in with um, stitch counts. She does good videos for things if she does a certain type of short row or a certain technique. They're very well thought out. So that will be coming up. We, we will probably start looking at yarns come, well, May 16th. Once she releases photos, we'll be able to kind of play around with yarns a little bit. And I'll have some suggestions for that. Um, we will do a kickoff for the knit along on July. I'm hoping to do a kickoff on July 1st. Um, Victoria has her national dance competition in um, Hershey, Pennsylvania. Officially, it goes July 4th through the 8th. I think we're leaving the weekend before because that's a Monday. Um, so I would like to do the kickoff on July 1st if I'm in town and not going too crazy with trying to get out of town. I want to try and do that. I think that's all I have for dates right now. If, as usual, if there's something that you all want me to talk about, if there's a technique um, I can try and, and show, or at least I can talk about different ways to do things but like I did this time, let me know. If there's a certain yarn you want me to talk about, I pretty much have a sample knit with every yarn I have in the shop. So um, that's something I can talk about too. Oh, Mary, yes, that's right, the yarn crawl. Um, so as I mentioned last week, the I-75 yarn crawl is no longer a thing. Uh, the person that organizes that has um, opted to not continue, but I think somewhere between 12 and 15 shops in the mid Michigan area will be participating in a yarn crawl the end of July, beginning of August. It's a Thursday through the following Saturday, July 28th through August 6th, I wanna say. I should have written that down. <laughs> um, but I think it'll be really cool because a lot of people with the I-75 yarn crawl were um, were hesitant to participate because really it was just along the I-75 corridor. And if you didn't travel out of this area very often, you wouldn't get very far with that. So this one stays in Michigan, in the mid Michigan, it's called the middle of the mitten yarn crawl. And there will be passports and bags and all kinds of goody things. I don't know, I believe the passports are gonna be $8. Each one will have a write-up on each shop. There will be a map in there. Um, you'll get your passport stamped and there should be some goodie prizes to be able to win July 28th through August 6th. I think that's what I said. Okay. <laughs> 
sorry guys, there's a little bit of a lag in, in things. Um, each shop will be selling those passports. So if you know you want one, let me know and I will put your name on the list. I don't, I don't know when I'm gonna get them or any of that, but I do know they're gonna be $8 and I'll be able to sell them here in the shop. And I don't know, I think it's gonna be a fun thing. There will be at some point a website that will have more info about it as well. All right, I think that's all I have for tonight for you guys, unless somebody pops something else up, but I think that's it. Um, I hope everybody has a good week, a good night. Um, I can't tell from here if it's still snowing. I hope it's not, <laughs> but it's still warm enough well, 34 degrees. It was 36 when I came in, but hopefully nothing is sticking to the ground. Hi, Aunt Jackie. I didn't see you on earlier, and I don't think mom is on because I think she and my dad are out to dinner with your brother. <laughs> um, so everybody have a good week and stay warm, stay creative, get all your knits around you or your crochets around you and, and really hunker down, get some things done. Winter's not quite over yet. And for some of us, that's okay. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a good week.